So a funny thing happened after the Super Bowl. A new Cloverfield movie came out of nowhere. Surprise! This was directed by Julius Ona and is the first movie in the Cloverfield series to not get a theatrical release, instead going straight to Netflix after spending many years in development hell. In the not-too-distant future, a multinational crew is sent into space! And they are testing some sort of giant hadron collider that could potentially solve the world's energy crisis with science! And given that this is a sci-fi horror film, something inevitably goes horribly wrong, and all of a sudden, hey, where'd the Earth go? Don't look at me, you had it last. And they have to try to find a way back to Earth as more shit continues to go horribly wrong. So this had pretty much no buildup whatsoever, just Netflix comes out of nowhere and says, Surprise! We got a new Cloverfield movie! With a very impressive cast. But despite its impressive cast, this movie has kind of been stuck in limbo for some time, and I'm sure this won't surprise anyone who's actually seen the movie, but it was originally not supposed to be a Cloverfield movie, much like 10 Cloverfield Lane that came before it. It was originally called God Particle, and the Cloverfield name and a very brief reference to the original movie were pretty much shoehorned into the film at great expense and at the last minute. 10 Cloverfield Lane turned out to be pretty damn good. Cloverfield Paradox? You know, I kind of enjoyed this one, but I do want to say this. This movie is trash. I know it's trash, but it still hit enough of the right notes for me that I was able to enjoy it anyway. I was able to get past its flaws and just have fun with it, and it does have flaws. Oh. Oh, it has flaws. The budget for this movie was not very high, and some of the special effects kind of give that away. They're not all terrible, but some of them do look a bit cheap. It is definitely not hard sci-fi. It basically operates on the principle of science is magic. And because it's magic, they can pretty much do whatever the hell they want, and they don't have to explain any of it. And there were some things that probably should have been explained, like how is there gravity on a spacewalk? And for that matter, how is there gravity anywhere in this space station? Because it has numerous rotating sections, I presume because someone who worked on this movie saw 2001, or perhaps The Martian. But at least in those movies, they had the basic concept of artificial gravity correct. But in The Cloverfield Paradox, the direction in which the sections of this space station are rotating, everybody should be flung up against the walls. And while I did like Gugu Mbatha Ra's performance as Hamilton, the character is kinda stupid. This is a minor spoiler, so you have been warned, but both of Hamilton's children died some time ago in an accident, and that's largely why she decides to go into space, because she's not leaving much behind. And after everything goes haywire with that giant-ass Hadron Collider they're testing, they end up in a parallel universe, and in this universe's version of Earth, her kids are still alive. So she wants to stay. There is a very big problem with this plan. There's another version of her that is also still alive on this Earth. So... How exactly does she expect this to work? She's just gonna knock on the front door and be like, Hi, I'm your doppelganger. Please welcome me into your home. Somehow, I don't think they're just gonna welcome her with open arms. Now, even though this movie is pretty stupid, all of the batshit crazy stuff that happens is actually kind of fun. Especially the stuff involving Chris O'Dowd's arm. That guy is always a treat. I thought the story was engaging enough for what it was, junk science and all. And like I said before, this movie has an amazing cast. Gugu Mbatha Ra, David Oyelowo, Daniel Brühl, Si Zhang, uh, the aforementioned Chris O'Dowd, and his arm. And anyone who's watching this without having seen the movie first is probably very confused as to why I keep talking about Chris O'Dowd's arm. And despite this being a very silly movie, they are all giving 110%, and there are some legitimately funny and emotional moments. I know a lot of people did not like this movie, and I totally get it. This movie is bad, but it's my kind of bad. As for a recommendation, had this movie actually been released in theaters, I probably would have told you to wait for it to hit Netflix, but... Since it's already there, and Netflix has saved us a step, what do you got to lose apart from an hour and 42 minutes? I mean, if you don't already subscribe to Netflix, I wouldn't say it's worth subscribing just for this movie, not at all. But if you're already a member, you might as well.
And that's all I got to say about the Cloverfield Paradox. Till next time, take care.